guys. Okay, so as a woodworker, a lot of times, and I think this kind of goes across the board for anybody. If somebody sees something that you're able, that you do for a hobby or, or a side business or something like that, they will bombard you with messages from stuff that they see either on TikTok or Instagram or if Pinterest is still around a Pinteresty thing. They'll send that to you and they'll say, can you do this? And as a woodworker, a lot of times what I'll get is something that has been CNC'd. And I don't know if you saw my small shop, I do not own a CNC. So uh, when somebody asks you to do something like that, that you don't have the machinery or the tools to do, you really are left with three options. One is you can just tell them, sorry, I can't do that. I don't have the tooling or the capabilities. Two, you can go get that tooling and then you're good. Or three, you could try to make make it work without that correct tool. And that's what we're gonna to do today. So what I was sent is this right here. And now what these are, is these are alphabet banks for kids, like coin banks and stuff like that. Basically piggy banks that have an, a letter on them. They're a letter that's a piggy bank. So um, I was sent one of those and I was asked, can I do it? Now, if you see from that picture, those things are beautifully CNC'd, the acrylic, beautifully CNC'd and inlaid in. Again, I don't have a CNC. So uh, I'm going to figure out a way to get around the non-CNC and make them if I can might be a complete failure let's get dusty. first step we run over the chop saw cut these two by sixes down to length and we cut just enough that we'll be able to join these together later on and then we head right over to the table saw and rip over one of the round over edges off of there give us some flat edges to line up together and drop the table down if you like that table it's on youtube how i did it and now we smear glue on those edges that we just cut on the table saw that are flat and we glue them together using a couple of clamps we clamp down the pressure and get these things all nice and glued up all right so i have what i need to cut out all done. Now I did this, I actually made a stencil of this over on the Cricut because I didn't think I could actually get the spacing and everything to look really well on this. Let me talk to you about what we're going to do here. Because of the fact that this is going to be such thin rails on the sides, all the spacing, because I have to cut out all of this, and I don't want this thing to blow apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to cut all of this out to keep all the extra material on here, and hopefully that will hold it together. And then I can use the router and I have to router out a back panel and then the front acrylic piece on the front. And then I will attach the back panel and then that should reinforce this to be able to cut around and get it thin. So that's my plan. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to aug out the middle of this and do all that. Let's do that. So now, like I said, before I actually finish cutting this whole letter out, what I want to do is put a backer in it. And luckily for me, I only have like a full sheet of quarter inch plywood for just this little section. So I get to cut that out of. So anyways, so as you can see, there's a deeper groove in this back section because that's where the quarter inch plywood is going to sit in. And in the front section, it's a shallower groove. And that is for the 16th inch plexiglass that's going to go on there. So uh, I'm just going to trace out this under there somehow do that and then we're going to cut this out and attach this back here and once that's attached and the glue's dry because right now i have this seam this whole seam and this seam and once i cut this stuff out it's going to get real thin that's what i'm talking about i don't want this thing to explode so once i put that backer piece on and hold it on there that way then we'll be able to actually make cuts and make this thing vibrate a little more without blowing up But before we can put the background, we need to sand the inside of it. I'm using a file right here. And now we smeary smeary a bunch of glue around it. And some naily naily nailies. And we're all set to go now. Now that we got this thing with the back all buttoned in together and re-strength. And now I'm going to go through and I'm going to use the table saw to get kind of the roundabout cuts and the bulk of it off. And then I'll go back through with the jigsaw and cut out the inside. And then we'll have ourselves a letter C for C.
Now we're going to use a jigsaw to cut the bulk of that interior letter out. Uh, once that material has been removed, uh, then I'm going to bring it over to the bandsaw, which I can be a little more precise with than I can with the jigsaw. And once I have all that, it's back to my favorite thing, which is sanding. So, because I'm trying to make something that's been CNC'd and trying to make it look really nice, I'm not the greatest at it, but uh, this looks decent enough. Uh, I did the slot on the top for coins. It looks decent on the front. The back does not. So you can see I have all these gaps. Things didn't line up very well. Um, so my plan to combat that is this. So I'm just going to use some automotive bondo filler. Uh, it'll adhere really well to the wood. It's easy to work with. It's sandable. It'll dry fast. And then I'm just going to paint the backs instead of staining the backs. Paint them black. I will stain the front. And then we'll put the acrylic on. And then that will wrap it up for this. So I'm going to mix up some bondo right now while the shop warms up. We will get to town on that. Okay, this is it. I need answers right now. So, I've used Bondo like half of my life. I've never seen it with blue hardener. Is that something that's done now? Because if they did, they need to go back to the red. Because that's what I like better. Because when I started doing Bondo, I was told that you mix the hardener in and you mix it until it looks like the pink of the spreader. And that's how I knew when my Bondo was mixed. If you're mixing the stuff up to blue, what do I use to make sure it's right? Let me know in the comments below if they've actually changed to blue or if I just got some weird thing because this is like third world dimension stuff. But anyways, yeah, I did get the, the Bondo fillers all on it. I got it absolutely everywhere. So once that dries, which now I'll never know because now it's blue instead of pink. Um, once that's done, I'm going to sand it, do a nice black paint on the back of it, and then I will stain it. And now I've got this thing almost fully sanded. And uh, the back came out, eh. but uh, <clears throat> not the back I've seen. So all I did to put the acrylic top on is I literally just laid the, the acrylic right over and just traced out where it needed to be. Now, as you can see, I've done a couple of these already. I found the best way to cut this is with a small router bit um, because I tried to use a fine toothed uh, jigsaw blade and it cracked it. So uh, just cutting it out of this, making it fit. So I was trying to touch up one of the, the acrylic pieces on the belt sander and without giving you too much information this happened. So luckily for me I bought just the right amount of acrylic because acrylic is expensive. So I get a new sheet. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through I'm going to actually put a dot and mark every spot that I want to put a hole through the acrylic to run those screws through to hold the acrylic on. And then I'm going to use the router again and to make that hole because I'm afraid of using a drill bit because I'm afraid of cracking again. So we're just going to put dots, kind of make it look uniform as much as possible. And then, like I said, then go through and make a hole and then put screws on. Yeah. All right, so this thing is now dry. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to peel off the back side. I've kind of cleaned up the edges of the acrylic a little bit. We're going to peel off the back protective layer. Kind of wipe her down, make sure you got no debris on there. Because once this thing's set, you're not going to be able to get to the back side of it. Place it on. Peel off the front side. Now I have these half inch self tapping screws. I'm going to put these in. I'm not going to drive these all the way in because I don't want to crack the acrylic. So you get them going most of the way and then I'll go back through with just a hand screwdriver and finish tightening them. Do this all the way across and then we are done. so I screwed up so um where the coins go in I put a hole so if I screw through that it's going to come out here so all I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut off all of the threads off of the screw 
and then I'm just gonna actually just glue it in here as a false head. It doesn't it doesn't really need it in there anyway. So we'll do it that way, and that way this thing will still be able to come off. So my bad. Think things through first. And we are complete. Um, it looks like it's supposed to. I mean, you put the money in there, and there it is. So uh, the whole idea behind this video was basically just to show you guys the process of thinking outside the box. Because this should have been CNC'd. If you CNC it, it would have taken a quarter of the time that it took me. It would look a lot nicer, because I'll admit, it could look nicer. Um, but it's just a way of thinking outside the box and making things work with kind of what you have. I don't have a CNC. I don't have a planer for joining the boards. I have a cheap bandsaw. And, I mean, those are the main tools that I used. And I got it done still. So, um, if you guys are interested in seeing the other ones, that the other letters that I did, make sure you head over to Instagram or Facebook. Follow me there because after the holidays, I'll post all the letters together that I did. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. And, uh... I'll see you guys on the next one.